Welcome to a video tutorial on problem number eight from the test. Uh, this word problem was uh, probably the toughest one on the test and the one that students struggled with the most, especially the last part. So let me just go to the first part pretty quickly and then we'll get to the last one, which is the one with the data and the, and the graphing and everything. Please listen carefully. Have your graphing calculator ready. Uh, when I get to the parts where we use it, we'll do it together. And uh, if you go through it with me, I'm sure you'll understand how it's done and you'll learn a lot as, as well about your calculator. So let's begin. The situation is we have a rock falling off of a cliff. So imagine a cliff and it's not being thrown off a cliff because if it's being thrown off a cliff, maybe it would go kind of up and then down. It just imagine it just kind of rolls off the cliff, off the edge. So it rolls off and then goes down, down, down and it finally hits the ground sometime below. So first of all, if you look at the table, this data should make sense. After one second, it's 105 meters, and H represents, it says, height above the ground. So the cliff is obviously more than 105 meters above the ground, because after one second of falling, the rock is 105 meters. Then after two seconds, it's this high, three seconds, and so on. Five seconds, it's only 26 meters above the ground, so it's almost going to hit the ground down below and probably by six seconds it's ready to hit the ground and we'll figure that out in a minute but this doesn't tell you how high the cliff is because that one second it's 105 meters up from the ground that means at zero seconds which is the beginning is when it was on top of the cliff so let's look at that uh, it says Jane thinks of a model so she thinks this this model here this equation or this it's called a cubic function whenever you see something cubed if this was x cubed it's a cubic function she thinks that's a good model for this data that if you graph this it would represent this real life data very well so we're going to check that later as well so first write down the height of the cliff well how do you find the height of the cliff we know if this is the model that we want to use the height of the cliff will be found when time is zero and that's what i put here because at time zero Nothing has happened yet. Time zero means the beginning of whatever is happening. So time is zero. No time has passed. The rock is just sitting on top of the cliff. So at time zero, if we put t equals zero in there, so see t zero, 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 then hopefully that will help us find out what's happening at the beginning. And if I plug that in, I use it on my calculator, I found that, well, you don't even need a calculator. This is zero. This is this time zero as well. This is zero. So all these are just gone and you're left with 106. So 106 or 106 meters must be the height of the cliff because that is where the rock was in the beginning when the no time had passed. So that's the first one. Uh, number two, or part two here, find the height of the rock after 4.5 seconds. So if you look at a table, we know at four seconds it's here, at five seconds it's here. So at 4.5, it must be somewhere in between 60 and 26 meters. So we'll know our answer will be correct if we find something between there. So I put in time of 4.5 into the function. So this t was replaced by 4.5 and then every other t replaced by 4.5. So when you read a function, you should read this. What is the height when time is 4.5? And I calculated that on the calculator. Final answer is 44.9. That makes sense. It's a number between 60 and 26. So it is at 44.9 meters. Let's look at three. Uh, this one may have been a little bit tougher, uh, but if you remember on your calculator, you have a certain app that can help you with this. So find that after how many seconds the height of the rock is 30 meters. So now we want to know when is the height 30. So we're not looking for, we're not putting like here, we put in a value for time. Here we put in a value for time. Here we're not replacing the T. This question has nothing to do with the time. We weren't given the time we're actually going to find the time because it says after how many seconds. So that's the unknown. The thing we want to know is the time. The thing we do know is the height of the rock. So the height of the rock is 30. So now instead of replacing the t, we replace this part of the equation, the h of t, which is your height. So the height is 30. Here's all this. Now, in the past, you've solved quadratic equations. You've solved linear equations. But cubic, this is a little tougher. Like, how do you solve this now? How do you get an answer for t? There's an algebraic way to do it, but it's like kind of beyond our course, basically. You're allowed to use a calculator. You can do this stuff on your calculator. So let's look at how we do this on our calculator. The first step, however, is to subtract this 30 from this side so that we're left with 0 on this side. Because whenever we want to use our calculator or the, the poly simulation, which we're going to use in a moment, we want this side to be 0. You might remember that with quadratics last year. We had to have 0. So minus 30 here, 
minus 30 here, so that 106 becomes a 76 because we subtract 30 from it. And then we have a zero here. So let me go to the calculator. Grab your calculator as well. Let's put in this function. So here's the calculator. I am going to go to apps, right? I want my poly simulation. Yours, you might mem have memorized the number already. Mine, it's somewhere on this long list. I have way more apps than you. So I'm going to press alpha. And then here above the 8, there's a letter P. So I'm going to press 8. And it's going to show me all the P applications that I have. And it kind of gets me to the right spot. I see poly simulation there. I'm going to go here and enter poly simulation. Enter again. All right. We need to do poly root finder. Root finder means just finding the answers for x, the unknown, all right? So root finder, there. All right, before, in the past, with quadratics, you would just skip through the screen, press next, because it's already, what you can see here, an order of two. Order of two means the highest exponent of the function is a two. In quadratics, in you know, parabola graphs, yes, the highest exponent is a two, but in ours, the highest exponent is a 3, right? So this function has a t cubed. So if I go back to here, I got to change that order. I'm going to move over to the 3 and press enter. Now it knows I'm solving an order 3 function. So now I'm going to press here, graph, which is above the next or below the next. So next. And now notice it's a, a cubed, da, 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 and it's this kind of function. So it wants to know what's the first coefficient going to be, the second coefficient, the third one, and the final one. So the number in front of the x cubed, let's see. Well, that's negative 0.25. So I'm going to go negative 0.25. All right. Then I need the next coefficient. That's going to be the thing in front of the t squared. So here, t squared, negative 2.32. So negative 2.32. Next one, a1, the third coefficient. That's going to be the one by the x. So I did this one, did this one, now I'm here. 1.93. 1.93. Down. All right. A0. All right. That's the last term. It's the constant term, the one without the variable. And we just changed that. Remember, it's 106 here, but as we said, I subtracted this 30, subtracted 30 from here to make this 0, and this became 76. So now we're going to put 76 in here. 76. All right. And then you press graph again, because that's uh, for solving. Graph. And it's going to solve it for me. There. It found an answer for x. 4.9. And if I round that, 4.91. So our answer for t, because that's what the x is in this equation, is 4.9 I have here. All right? So after 4.9 seconds, the height of the rock will be 30. And let's look at here again. Let's see. Here's 60. 30 meters will be just above 26. So 30 is around here, and 4.9 seconds makes total sense. It's right here in this table. So that's how we do it. So make sure you understand poly simulation for solving any polynomial function, not just parabolas or quadratics. Okay, so that's that one. Now let's move on to, we're getting close to 8C, which was the toughest part here. Let's look at 8B and then C. So 8B, Kevin thinks his function. So now there's another student. His name is Kevin. He's created another model. He's created this function, which is... I don't know, maybe similar or maybe not so similar. I mean, so Jane's was this cubic one. Kevin's is this quadratic one. He thinks it's a better model. And when by better model, we mean, I think that this function, if I graph it, will be closer to our real life data than this one, right? That's what a function does. We graph it and it, we try to make sure it hits as many points as possible because then we've created an equation that can represent our real life data. So he thinks his equation is better. We should check. All right. So first of all, use Kevin's model to find when the rock hits the ground. Okay. The rock hits the ground when... We don't know. When? The question is when. So when means we're looking for time. If we're looking for time, we are assuming in this question that we know the height. So when the rock hits the ground, well, the height is zero. That makes sense. It's on the ground now. It's not in the air somewhere anymore. It's on the ground. The height of the rock is now zero. So height is zero. So again, we replace this side of the equation with zero because that's the height side. And on this side, we keep the t's because we're going to be looking for what is the time when the height is zero. Again, what is the time when the height is zero? This one is another one you can use poly simulation for, right? We have this function here. 
and now we're going to solve for t. So I'm going to punch this in to the calculator using poly simulation and solve it again. So let's see. I'm going to go to main here, poly root finder. Now we're back on this screen now. I've got to change this back to a 2 right here. Change it back to a 2 because now I'm using a quadratic and it's a power of 2. Enter. Okay, now we're on 2. Next again. See, now it's back to a quadratic and I can enter my three coefficients. So using Kevin's model, negative 5.2, negative 5.2. Next one, the next coefficient in front of the x, 9.5. 9.5 and then the final one the constant in his the constant is 100 and with the other one you know we have to do the 106 minus 30 we made 76 with this one this is already zero so this is a hundred and we're going to use a hundred so I'm going to put a hundred in here and solve great gives me two answers as you know quadratic a parabola goes up and then down it has two answers it basically it passes through the x-axis twice there's a positive answer and negative answer. Well, obviously, we are not going back in time, so negative time answer is no good. So here's a positive time answer, 5.39. So that's what I put here. Time is 5.39. Let's see if that makes sense. Going back to the table, when does the rock hit the ground? Well, at 5 seconds, it was 26 meters above the ground, and now we found out 5.39. It's going to be at 0. That makes sense. About half a second later, it's on the ground. That's great. All right, let's move on to 8C, the toughest part. On graph paper, using a scale of one centimeter to one second. Okay, so this graph paper you're using, you should know now that uh, one of these long squares here, not those little ones, those are too small to be one centimeter, but these long ones are all one centimeter. So it often does this on IB exams. It, it gives you proper graph paper and it says how to scale it. So one of these is going to be scaled to what? What did it say? One centimeter is one second. So time is on our x-axis, so I have the seconds here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we know after 5 it hits the ground. That's the x-axis, and I've made every one of those big squares one second. That's what it told me to do. Then I go to the other information, um, and 1 centimeter to 10 meters. So 10 meters must be the, the height part, okay? That's the y-axis, the height part. So look at this. We have 1 centimeter, one of those big squares. 10 meters, 10 meters, 10 meters, 10 meters, 10 meters. And we knew we know the rock started somewhere up there above 106 meters, 106 meters. So there it is. I'm just going to plug in my computer. So take a look at this graph. Uh, that's the graph we should have created. That was the easy part of HC because it's not so hard to, to make graphs. And hopefully you understood the scaling that I explained to you. But if you didn't, well, there you have it, the one centimeter scaling. So there's the graph. All right, and that's the path of the rock, and I've even connected the points to show the rough journey of the rock. And it doesn't quite hit at 106 here. I should have really drawn it like that because it started at 106. And on the bottom, it looks like it hits at 5.39 seconds. So perfect. That's great. All right, now the question is, Jane or Kevin, which of their graphs comes closer to this one? All right, so this is definitely a graphing calculator question because those are tough graphs. There's a lot of decimals and all that. You're not expected to graph those by hand. We can use our calculator to graph those and see which of their models will come closer to this real data. So let's do that now on the calculator. So how do you graph on your calculator? First of all, I'm going to get out of poly simulation. So I'm going to do main here, and then 6 is quit, so I'm going to quit. All right, I'm back to my normal thing. I'm going to graph some things now. So I'm going to do y equals. All right, but hold on a second. When I graph the graphs on here, it's just going to show me the graphs. Like It's going to show me Jane's and Kevin's. but I won't be able to compare that to the, to the real data, all right? So whenever you need to enter data or like, like points, like, like this table of values on your graphing calculator, you need to use the stat button. The stat button gets you into tables, statistical tables, all right? So stat, looking on here, looking on here, stat, there it is. I see it right there, stat. I'm going to press that button, stat. Then I get to this menu. To get to a table where you can enter values, you're going to use number one, edit. So I'm going to press edit. Now I'm in my table. If your table has data in it and you want to clear it out, all you have to do is go to that, that uh, column there, press up, you'll go to the list there, press clear, and it's waiting, it's flashing, you press enter. And if you had data in there, it would clear. Let, let me just show you how that works real quick. Sorry, two, let's say I had some random data in there, three. Six. This is not the data I want in here. This is not from this problem. Let's say that was in there. So 
I open this and that's there, I don't want it. I go up to list, press clear, press enter, it's gone. My list is empty. So if you need to empty your list, do that now. So now it's empty. I'm going to enter in the real life data and graph it to see what it looks like in my calculator. So first I'm going to enter this column, the x values, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is going to be at my x values, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, enter, 2 seconds, 3 seconds, 4 seconds, and 5 seconds. I'm going to jump over this one. I'm going to enter my y data, which is the height data. 105, 98, 84, OK. 105, 98, what is it, 84? Yeah, 84, and 60 and 26. 60 and 26. Great, I entered all the data. Now, how do you graph it? Well, I don't know. Can we just graph data by graphing it like we did graphing graphs let's see i'm gonna press graph and see what happens all right awesome i see nothing oh no okay that will often happen when you graph stat you know we just used stat and we went to one to edit we just entered stuff into the stat menu into a table so that will often happen when you try to graph it nothing and the reason is this uh we need to set something up notice on the y equals right the y equals button takes us to here where we enter equations to be graphed but if i quit Above the y equals in blue, it says stat plot. That means that is the thing where it's going to plot your points, like your statistical points, your data points. So I wanted to plot my data points. So let's go second, stat plot, and make sure everything's good. Well, look, there's multiple plots, plot one, plot two. There's all these things I can plot, but all of them say off, off, off. All right. Well, I'm going to go number one because that's the one we were filling in a table, and it says off. So I'm going to press enter to select it. And I'm going to change the off to on, all right? So press there. Now I've selected on. And it shows you type. It shows you dots here, lines, a histogram. Dots are okay. We just want to see points. We just want to see points. And it says, what, where are you getting this data from? X list. List 1. If you remember in the, where we were just entering the data, the first one was list 1, and the second one was list 2. And it says X list, Y list. So yeah, that matches what we want. It already kind of assumed what we have is right. Okay, so anyway, on was the main thing here. I turned it on. Enter. Now I'm going to press graph again. Wow, amazing. There it is. All right. It's right there. I see it. It's plotted my points. Since I turned on stat plot, it showed me my points. Uh, one thing you might have here is it might not, you might not see all the points. So let me show you something. I'm just going to go to wait. Let's go quit. Zoom. I'm going to go to zoom standard. Okay, because your calculator may have been in the standard graphing mode, which is this. This is your standard window. It's like x values of 1 to 10 or to negative 10, y values to negative 10. It's basically 10, 10, 10, 10. That's the standard window. So let me see if I press graph what I see. Do I see anything? I'm kind of not seeing anything. I don't know, because my data is maybe outside of this window. So the way to, if this is what happened with yours, you did all the steps I showed you, you tried to graph your statistical data it wasn't working go to zoom there's different kinds of zoom things you can do but if you go down the list go down the list look for one that has something to do with statistics it means our data our data i don't see one. Oh, zoom stat okay number nine that's the one zoom stat it's going to zoom in on the graph to a window to like your viewing window that will show only the stats i mean in other words only the points you've entered in that table so if i hit number nine Great, that's exactly what it just did. It showed me all my points. So it changed the window here. So it went from 0 to, I guess, 5.39 or whatever. 5, I think 5 is the last point we entered, right? Yeah, 5, 526. So here's 526. So here, it must be going from 0 to about 100, because my highest y value is 100. And then here, it goes to 5 seconds and 26. So it has all my points. It changed the window to show my points. And let's confirm that the window is what I just thought it was. I'm going to press on window and let's look at it. X min. So the smallest X value is showing is 0.6. Okay, that makes sense. The highest X value it's showing is 5.4. Why is it showing me those? Because the minimum X value is below the 1 and the highest one is above the 5. So it's showing me all, it's showing me a window that includes all these points, right? It's between 0.6 and 5.4. It's between those values. It's going to show me everything. And the Y, look at this, 12.57 and 118. So it's between 12.57. Yeah, that that's, includes that. And 118 is the highest one. So it's definitely showing me between all these. And there you can see on the graph, 
there's five points, and I should see all five of my points. All five of my points are showing up. So that zoom stat, zoom, and then number nine, zoom stat, changed the window to show me all my points. So now I have those points. Great. Uh, I have the points, but now I want to see which model is better. So here's Jane's model. I'm going to enter in that equation and graph it and see if it comes close to these points. So I'm going to go to y equals. I'm going to enter in her equation. So negative 0.25, okay, negative 0.25x. Oh, I don't think I got a 0.25 there. If you ever miss something, in you don't have to clear it. I want to insert something here. If I just wrote point, two, point right now, it would erase my 2. But you can go second insert and it knows it's going to insert something. See, watch this. I'm going to put a point in there and it kept my 2 instead of erasing it. So now I'm going to go back to the end. Alright, so a point 0.25, negative 0.25, negative 2.32, okay, negative, oh, I made another mistake. That should be 0.25x cubed, so I should make that cubed. So I'm going to use this to raise to the exponent, 3, there's cubed, now I'm going to go this way. Okay. Don't forget, to, I pressed the arrow at the end to get out of up, up in the exponent there. Negative 2.32, negative 2.32, all right? X, what's that again? Oh, it's X squared, isn't it? X squared, let me do that. So X squared, you can use this again to raise it to exponent, or there is just an X squared button, so it will turn that X into an X squared for me. There it is. All right, next I have a plus 1.93T, plus 1.93. 9, 3x. We're using x's instead of t's, right? And plus 106. Plus 106. There's Jane's model. She thinks it's a good one for this data. Well, let's check. I'm going to graph it and see how close is her model to the real data. Whoa, her model went up, and what's going on over there? Did I enter it right? Let me take a look. Something doesn't seem right there. Negative 0.25x cubed. All right. Minus... 0.232x squared. Yeah, something's not right. Ah, it's 0.232x squared. I don't see this plus 1.93. Oh, there it is, 1.93. That's fine. That's 106. Huh, something's not right. The graph does not look right. Negative, negative. Is there another negative somewhere? No, that's not right. Let's see. Negative 0.25x cubed. Well, let me just try again. Something's not right now. Hmm. I did this before, and it did not look strange like that. So let me try again. I'm going to just do it one more time. Fast forward this part of the video if you need to. I'm going to try this one more time. I'm going to put a parenthesis this time as well. X cubed minus 2.32x squared. Oh, yeah, 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 what am I doing? Cubed minus 2.32. x squared plus 1.9 oh just mistakes ever x plus 106 plus 106 Enter. okay graph ah better I knew I did something wrong I think I know what I did wrong anyway there it is look at that Jane's function seems to be a great model look it goes through the points almost perfectly all right so already we're like wow that's impressive she was able to make an equation that passes through because even if you change that equation slightly this graph would look so different it would be like go up and over them and all that but she found the exact perfect equation to match the points almost perfectly it's great all right let's look at his because he's arguing hey my name is Kevin, and I gave you this function. I think this is a better model. So let's enter his and see what the graph looks like. So I'm going to go back to here. You can go to y2 and enter another function. So his begins with negative 0.52t. Okay. Negative 5.2x, and his begins with x squared, right? There it is. Plus 
plus 9.5x plus 100. Plus 100. All right. Graph it. So it's going to graph hers first, then his. So you know the second one because these are in order. It graphs these in order. So it will graph hers first, then his. So you'll see clearly which one's which. Let's graph it. There's hers already. Now it's adding his. Oh, look at his. So his, you saw it. All right, I'm going to press graph again. Oh, no, no, now it won't work. Anyway, there it is. His, you can see it came below. So already you can see, wow, hers passed right through the points. His, not so close. So it's clear from that graph that hers is a better model. It goes through all the points perfectly. His doesn't. I mean, it's very good. Like, look, up here, his and hers are very close. But then his just kind of goes down more. It doesn't match the data as well. It's very good uh, to see on there. All right. If sometimes the graph, it'll, it'll be hard to see. So there's something else on here that helps you. There's different ways to represent data. We had our list. We have our functions, our graph, right? Here's our functions. Here's our graph. But data can be represented in tables also. So check this out. Above graph in blue, you see table. I'm going to press second. And this is really useful, especially for this problem. Go second, table. Check it out. It gives me a table. Here's those values. Here's function y1, which is Jane's. Here's y2, which is Kevin's. And now it shows each function what it produces. At each of those points, what number? And you can compare that to the real data. So now let's get the real data in our head one more time. Here it is. The real rock falling is here. 1, 105, 298, okay? 384. Let's just remember those three and compare now to Kevin's and Jane's. 105, 98, 84. So the real data was 105, 98, 84. So Jane's, oh, look, well, here's one, one, 105. Hers is 105 point, look, so close. His, 104, not close, but not as close. The second point was 98 in the real data, okay? Her function, 98.58, his, 98.2. Okay, they're both very close. Let's look at the third point. After three seconds, 84 is the real data. Now let's look at hers. 84, look, she's right on there, 84. He, his function, 81. Close, but, you know, getting further away. Let's look at four seconds. In the real falling of the rock at four seconds is at 60 meters. Now, her function, 60. Wow, hers is right on. His, 54. And that's what we saw happening on the graph here. His just started falling below the real data. Well, whereas hers really stayed close to the real data. Let's look at the last point. In the real data, 5, 26. 26 meters after five seconds. On her function, 26. His function, 17. See, his is falling way below. Hers is sticking to the data. So her model, her equation here, is a great model for the data. It matches the real-life data. This is awesome. So you can answer the last question now. Here's what it asks you to plot. You can even kind of draw in his and her functions to have a better answer. Draw them in and then explain like it's here. Jane's function is better as a model because her graph passes very close to the points. We saw that on the graph in the table. Also, Kevin's graph shows the rock rising initially, which is impossible. Jane's rises too, but not as much. Rising, interesting, I didn't see that. Let's look at the graph, so we'll finish with this. I don't see anything rising, but maybe I'm too far away from this data to see it. Maybe I have to zoom in on that. How can I do that? Go to window, this is the last thing we'll do. I wanna look at just the top part. So I don't wanna look at X, va oh no, X values are fine. X max, well, I wanna see X only to like, two seconds. I don't want to see all the way. I just want to see two seconds. So let's look at that. I want the x min to be at zero. Like what's happening from time zero to time two. The y values. I don't want to see all the y values. I want to see just the top part. What's going on at the top? And the rock is at 106 in the beginning. So why don't I just look at from, from like, I don't know, maybe let's make it 90, all right, to 110. All right, so I'm gonna look at y values from 90 to 110. It will show me just that upper part of the graph. So I'm gonna see what's going on up there. Let's graph it and see. All right, there's my real data. This is Jane's function coming through. Now there's Kevin's, whoa, see? Now that we zoomed in on this first little bit of the graph, we see hers is really good. This could be like a rock falling, right? There's sliding off the cliff and then falling. His though, look at that, whoa, goes up and then it goes down. So then his goes down with hers, that's fine, but it's going up here, that's weird. It's kind of rising, really strange. Rocks don't do that. If you push the rock off a cliff, it wouldn't go up, it would go down. So hers, down, all right. So now you can argue it both ways, just like in the answer. Jane's is better. It hits all the points, and it doesn't do this weird rising thing in the beginning. 
great answer, great math, great graphing calculator question. If you enjoyed this video, if it helped you out with this question, please post a comment or I'll just ask you in class how it was because I know this question is hard. But if you really try this video, try it on your calculator as you do it, you can do it. This is what this class is all about. We're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn how to use your calculator. You're going to do some good math. Thank you.